Welcome to the Daily Update, Condensed Edition, where I'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, July 5th, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, July 6th. We had a bit of a down day. Right now, we are trying to pull back after being short-term overbought, but it just looks like a pullback at this point. Now, we have some major economic reports coming out later in the week, and that could have a real shift, either positive or negative, on the market. But overall, we're still maintaining a real positive stance, looking like we just got up a little too far too fast. We're pulling back, and then we'll see how things move going forward. What are some comments that we can make? There are concerns developing about a global growth slowdown. Remember a week ago where the market was starting to shift a little bit more positive, not being as concerned about this? Well, there's some reports that came out from China and in the Eurozone that suggests maybe things are slowing down overall, so we might have to worry about that as well. The U.S. is looking to restrict China's access to cloud computing. That could have an impact on the tech sector. And then China said that foreign entities will have to have permission to export gallium, which is used for semiconductors, and germanium, which is used for fiber optics products as well as night vision goggles. Just to give you an idea, China produces 60% of the world's germanium and 80% of gallium. The FOMC meeting minutes did come out, but they really didn't have any surprises. The small caps were weak. Now, we're seeing a bit of a discrepancy here. The Russell 2000 index is generating a golden cross. The S&P small cap index is not generating one, so we're a little bit concerned about that. On a short-term basis, we're still looking overbought when we look at our 20-period exponential moving average. The Williams percent are the CCI 14 and 20, the Stochastics, our standard deviations chart, the Arun indicator, and the PMO study. On an intermediate-term basis, we're still looking overbought with the CMB composite. That's a new addition to the list. We're watching our oscillators. They're trying to shift back more positive, but they're still looking kind of extreme positive at this point. The Sean Trend Meter and the rate of change going back 200 periods, even though this is a longer-term chart, we're looking at it more on an intermediate-term basis. The dollar was up, and interest rates were also up, and that provided some headwinds for the market. All of the yield curves that we follow remain inverted. Sentiment is still extreme positive, coming in at 80, where it had been at 79. And our trend is positive. The green line's on top, but it is declining. However, both the ADX and the moving average are moving up, and the ADX is above the moving average. Our bias is mixed because of the down day and our momentum. I'm still keeping it positive for right now. Economic reports that came out. We had factory orders that came out up 0.3% month over month. They expect to double that, being up 0.6%. Last time it did come in at up 0.3%. When you take out transportation, factory orders were down half a percent month over month. Last time they were down 0.6%. Shipments of manufactured goods came in up 0.3%. Last time they were down 0.6%. Here's the intraday chart where we did gap lower. Now the reason why the R and S levels are so close to each other is because they're based on the previous day. And since we really didn't have much action on Monday, it made these levels pretty close to each other. But we came down to S2, we set the low for the session, bounced up off of that, got a little bit above the daily pivot. We never went positive. We drifted lower, came back down almost to S2, but not quite, bounced up off of that, and then ended up closing at S1. We're also keeping an eye on a little bit of a shift here. Growth is now starting to outperform value on this chart. The red line has dropped below the blue line. Also, growth to value ratio. Near the end of the day, it showed some improvement and actually went positive. We're watching the skew index. It's coming up to this extreme positive area. We don't know if that signals a top, a bottom, or a continuation. We're just going to keep an eye on that. That might be happening because we have the employment situation report coming out on Friday. We're also keeping an eye on this. Since the VIX is acting a little strange, we're starting to really spike up with our VIX to S&P 500 ratio, but we're still below this dashed line. As far as our trend, the green line is on top, but it's declining. The ADX is above the moving average and advancing, and we are in a trending environment, and we would default to positive. The daily chart's really not showing us all that much, especially when you compare it to last Friday. On the bottom, you can see where volume did pick up, but it's still below average. 
Here's what we're also watching. The transports came right up to this previous high and are now starting to turn down. Is this going to provide overhead resistance? We saw a little bit of improvement with the utilities, enough to break above this trend line, but they're still weak overall. Here's another look at the transports to S&P 500 ratio. It did tick down slightly. We want this ratio to really be going up to give some good support to the S&P. Also, we're showing that the relationship between the S&P and the transports continues to get stronger. Then looking at this chart, the transports are coming right about up even with the Dow. Here's another thing we're watching, the 61.8% retracement level for the NASDAQ. This has provided overhead resistance before. Are we going to be able to break through that or are we going to fall from that level? We're also watching the NASDAQ 100 with the previous high. We came right up to it before and then have been bouncing back down. Are we going to be able to break through that or are we going to continue to fall? The NASDAQ 100 also was generating a recent sell signal or a negative sign after the BPI went extreme positive, but now this is showing some improvement, possibly enough to negate that negative signal. So what's our outlook for Thursday? The technicals were still positive overall, but in the short term we still have a lot of overbought indications and we have a few in the intermediate term. The economic reports that will be coming out, we get the weekly MBA mortgage index, the ADP employment change, weekly jobless claims, the IHS market services, PMI, the final reading, and the big one will be the ISM non-manufacturing index. And then the job openings will be coming out. They usually precede the employment situation report. Geopolitical events, we're keeping an eye on Russia, and then that also involves Belarus. We're looking to see if anything happens there that might have an impact on the market. But the markets are still fixated on inflation and interest rates and now wondering where this growth scenario is going to shift. Here's the updated chart for the economic calendar. I did have to shift a few things around. Some things are coming out on Thursday that had been scheduled for Wednesday. Our Stock Traders Almanac statistics. We're pretty positive across the board. We're neutral to positive with the Dow, but we're looking more positive with the S&P and the NASDAQ. Here's the July chart showing that we'll be on the third trading day of the month where we are positive in a pre-election year before we start to chop more or less sideways. Then it's typically about the middle of the month if we start to see some weakness. We also are seeing that same thing when it comes to the NASDAQ up at about the midpoint of July. So our scenarios can't really go with the down one right now because our technicals are positive. However, we still remain short term overbought, but nothing has really shifted over negative yet. So we're still going with the up scenario, but be aware that we are overbought. If we do start to pull back, we'll evaluate things and see if they are shifting more negative. And we're not going with the sideways trend right now because our ADX is suggesting that we're in a strong trend. The warning signs. The VIX is still showing a lot of complacency. It's acting a little bit strange, which is why we're looking at that other chart. The cumulative new highs and new lows for the NASDAQ are still showing weakness. The three-month yield is above the levels where it was at in 2007, right before the great financial crisis. Earnings season can be either positive or negative, depending on what is reported. The positive signs are that we have the seasonality and setups. Those are still in the background, and I mainly cover those in the weekly video. The long-term special K chart on the daily basis is positive, where the weekly chart is still looking negative. The longer-term equity put-call ratio is still positive. The S&P is above the downtrend channel upper line. The market is still favoring a risk on posture over bonds. The Dow transports are improving, but now we have to ask, did they hit resistance? Are they going to start to fall back? Lower price levels so far have been providing support anytime we have been declining. The S&P is outperforming utilities. The NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100 continue to break out, but those resistance levels that I referred to are still ahead of where we're at. Staples to the S&P 500 ratio continues to decline. The small cap index did generate a recent golden cross, but the S&P index has not, where the mid caps did generate a golden cross not very long ago. Small and mid cap growth continues to be positive. Our conclusion, the S&P remains positive for right now, but we're still dealing with being overbought. In the short term, we're positive yet overbought. Intermediate term, somewhat overbought, but still positive. Long term, we still remain positive. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. Have a really good day and I will talk to you in the next video.